Want to have a Chinese herbal pantry that you can go to whenever you need something to help to boost your energy, to relax you, to help you to sleep better, to warm you up, clear heat, or to relieve minor symptoms such as common cold in the early stage, dry cough or dry skin, dry mouth. In this two-part video series, I recommend 10 herbs for your own Chinese herbal pantry for everyday healthy living. You have learned these five herbs in my last video and today I'm going to explain the next five herbs. Hi everyone, welcome to Chinese Herbal Pantry. My name is Shirley. I'm a Chinese medicine practitioner and a Western medicine pharmacist in Australia. This channel is about how to improve general well-being and to relieve minor symptoms by using Chinese herbs at home effectively and most importantly, safely. This is a two-part video series which I share my favorite 10 herbs that I always keep in my own pantry. They frequently appear in my videos here in this channel. You might be quite familiar with them already if you have been following me for a while. In the last video, I share these five herbs which include goji berry, ginger, red dates or jujube, chrysanthemum flower and the Chinese yam, shan yao. If you haven't watched the previous video, make sure you check it out after this video. For today, I'm going to share the next five herbs with you. So I'm going to put this aside. It looks like a lot here, but actually this for me is considered one lot. They are the variety of mushroom or dry mushroom you could keep at home. And that's four here. So there are totally five here. So the five herbs that I'm going to share today are the lotus seed, the tangerine peel, the drops tear seed, the lily barbs, and a variety of mushroom. As I mentioned in the previous video, I will go through the properties of these herbs and their functions and how to use them in everyday life very quickly, assuming that you already have some basic understanding of traditional Chinese medicine. Please um, do your best to read more and learn more yourself with some credible websites and Chinese medicine books. Learning Chinese medicine is a lifelong journey. You can go to my website, I have a list of um, book recommendations for you. Or if you are not those kind of people can read by yourself and you need more support and want to go deeper and learn how to create and modify a recipe that best suits you and you want someone that can hold your hand along the way and someone that you can ask questions to, please consider joining my online course. For those that who are interested and have been thinking, I hope you won't miss out this opportunity as I don't teach my course too often. In the online course, you do get a lot of support from me and you will have a weekly live Q&A session with me. So if you are interested to learn more about it when I launch the course, don't forget to um, join the waitlist through this link here and when I launch it you will receive an email to inform you about all the details. Also I have created a beautifully designed mini booklet for you for all these 10 herbs. They, I include all the important information in there so if you want a copy of that go to this link or go to my website to grab a copy and make sure you keep this little booklet in your pantry so when you slowly build up your herbal stocks in your pantry you know what they are, why they are there and how they use it just by going through my booklet. So now let's dive in in the next five herbs. Okay, I already explained the first five ingredients here. So for today, the sixth ingredient that I recommend to keep it in your pantry is the lianzi, the lotus seed lianzi in Cantonese. The thermal property of uh, lotus seed lianzi is neutral. It is classified as an astringent herb. I know this is another little weird traditional Chinese medicine functions or jargon in Chinese medicine. In uh, Chinese medicine, uh, an astringent herb means that it is a herb that is able to stabilize and bind the essential matter in our body. So the traditional Chinese medicine function of lianzi lotus seed is it able to tonify our Chinese medicine spleen. Hence, it can astringent diarrhea, meaning through strengthening our Chinese medicine spleen, which usually is referred in the uh, Western medical term could be like our digestion. That's why by strengthening it, it can help to relieve the diarrhea caused by the weak digestions. Number two, um, the second function of uh, lotus seed is can nourish our Chinese medicine heart. Hence, it's able to relieve poor sleep with vivid dreams, palpitation with anxiety. Lotus seed is widely used in both savory and sweet soup. It's often paired with lily bark, which is a herb that I'm going to explain next. They work well together to calm our mind, to help us to sleep better, relax us. 
So this is a combination that I use in this sweet soup to help to relieve our anxiety and also to calm our mind to help us to sleep better. And the lutasi is often used in sweets and pastry. So for example, one of the most famous one is actually the mooncake. Inside mooncake, the filling is made from the lotus seeds. So the seven herbs that I recommend you to keep it in your uh, pantry is the lily bark. The mandarin is by her. The Cantonese is bark herb. The thermal property is uh, cool or cooling. It's classified as a yin tonic. The Chinese medicine function is able to nourish our yin to clear heat from Chinese medicine lung. And sometimes we can use it to clear to or to relieve dry cough or dry throat. It also can clear heat from Chinese medicine heart. That's why we can use it to calm our spirit or our emotion and this is the reason why we often uh, use it to relieve insomnia with dreams, mouth palpitations and to relieve restlessness caused by the heat because it can clear heat too. As I already mentioned it's often combined with lotus seed. We use it together a lot. We use it a lot in savory and sweet soup for all the above functions. If you can find a fresh form of lily bark where you are, you can also stir fry with other vegetables too. When I was living in Shanghai, China for three years when the lily bark is in season, that's one of my favorite favorite vegetable stir fried. Okay, the eighth ingredient to keep it in your pantry is the tangerine peel. The thermal property of tangerine peel is warm and is classified as a qi regulating tonic. Um, according to traditional Chinese medicine function, it means that it can move your qi when you feel stuck and stuff. You can use this one to kind of help to re regulate the qi movement in the body. It can also support digestions. It used to clear dampness and to clear phlegm. Actually, this is one of the ingredients that it's already in our everyday life or our cuisine both in the west and the east. It is quite common. I mean, when you go to yam cha or, or the Chinese dim sum, this one is often in the um, beef means ball. They add it there to cut the grease to reduce the heaviness of the meat. And we also use it a lot in some of the bean soup, like the red bean soup. Similarly, it's there to help to relieve the heaviness and also to relieve the bloating that caused by the bean. So that's one way to use it. In the Western cuisine, although they don't look exactly the same, but the concept is the same same when you make a very sweet dish or very sweet dessert sometimes they will add a little bit of lemon jazz uh, which is like a citrus peel so it helps to cut the sweetness and create a more balanced dessert or dish so it's the same concept it's already in our everyday cuisine and for chinese medicine it is considered a herb that has medicinal and health benefit i make a video that has tangerine peel in this video here is to help to relieve overacting so as i mentioned before the chinese medicine function is to support our digestion. It also can help to clear dampness and to um, clear the phlegm so you can add it to your herbal tea when you have mild cough that have like a bit of phlegm. So this is how you could use it. And so that's why that's the beauty of learning the basic functions and how to use them in your kitchen because they probably already in our everyday life. You just don't notice them. But when you know it and use it in the right place, you are maximizing the health benefits of it. So the next ingredient is the Jobs Tear Seed. It is the Chinese barley, so be aware it's a Chinese barley. There are many different types, specifically it's the Jobs Tear Seed that has more uh, medicinal function. So Jobs Tear Seed is slightly cold. In Chinese medicine, it's classified as a dampness clearing herbs. The Chinese medicine function is able to clear heat, to clear damp heat. It's able to relieve mild diarrhea, mild swelling, or feeling of sluggishness and heaviness of our body. This happens especially during hot and humid weather. So it's very easy to use. You can just boil in water and drink it as a drink or you could uh, put it in your congee, savory or sweet soup. In Malaysia, many hawker stores or um, restaurants, they serve the barley drink because of the hot and humid weather there. Okay, last but not least is to have a variety of mushroom and fungus in your pantry. This day we all know about the health benefits of mushrooms. Many signs and trials already um, prove that. And some company even make use of this and make mushroom powder supplements like Lion Maze. I've seen it in my um, health food store near me. They grind it into powder and then you can eat it like supplement. I mean, some of the trendy health video probably ask you to pop some of this into your protein 
drink or your smoothie or your fruit juice. So Chinese medicine or Asian community have long known the health benefits of mushroom and fungus and we actually have a big variety of it in some of the more traditional or old Chinese herbal shop in Hong Kong or in Asia in general. They might even have a special section just to sell you a big variety of mushroom and fungus. So these are the ones that I keep at home and mushroom and fungus are actually stable ingredients in Chinese cuisine. So what I have here, I have the standard dry Chinese mushroom. This is kind of a special species. It's not the dark one. This is an expensive one with the more whitish top and we have the black fungus. I haven't really used this in my channel but uh, looking back if you check this video where I make the steamed Chinese herbal chicken, you can add the black fungus in there to add a different types of flavor and also add a different texture because these can be crunchy and quite fun to eat. And if you follow me long enough, you know the snow fungus is a yin tonic to help with dry skin, to help to nourish our yin. And this is lion mane, which I already mentioned. Some of the company make it into like mushroom health powder. This you can put it in your savory soup. You can also stir fry it with other mushroom or stir fry it with your vegetables. So these are the cheap mushroom or um, fungus that I keep that you can use for your cooking and your diet. So not even to mention the more expensive one and make very famous recently in the West such as the reishi mushroom, the cordyceps. They now consider these are like another type of superfood or adaptogen that can help to um, regulate our nervous system and things like that. But there are cheap ones that you can also use on your everyday diet. And don't forget you can also get other type of fresh mushroom in your uh, standard groceries like the button mushroom, the uh, shiitake mushroom, oyster mushroom that you can get it for fresh. These are just some that is dry that I have it in my pantry so I can add it when I don't have access to the fresh one. Add a variety of them, learn some simple recipe with mushroom and fungus, especially those that you're not too familiar with. It's fun to add some new thing in your cooking and you also have the additional health benefits so you can check out some of the videos on my channel that I use the snow fungus. Okay, there you have it, the 10 herbs in your pantry. Okay, like I say, you don't have to get them all at once. Just slowly build up your pantry stocks or choose the one that suits you, the one that you like, the flavor. I mean, some people probably don't like fungus or mushroom yet or it's, it's an acquired taste, but do slowly add bit and pieces and see how you respond to it. With these 10 herbs in your pantry, you can have something to help you with sleep, to relax you, to enhance your chi, your immunity. There's something to clear heat, to clear humidity. And the mushroom is great for general well-being and the goji berries for eye health. So you can't have everything that you need for everyday minor symptom, for everyday healthy living in your pantry. So why not to slowly incorporate some of them? Some of them are so tasty like the goji and the red date. And a very important note for everyone who is watching here is the power of Chinese medicine lies in personalizations and the synergy effect of the herbal combination. Unlike the Western medicine, it is very rarely that we use one herb for one particular condition. It's often through our learning and understanding of the whole presentations and the herbal property that we use a few herbs together tailored for that specific needs for that particular person to understand the underlying cause and to take the necessary steps to prevent instead of purely rely on her it's also very very important in Chinese medicine so all these will help but they are only the beginning if you want to go deeper and to learn how they combine together to understand the Chinese medicine theory behind and the Chinese herbal medicine theory behind do check out my online course when I teach it that's when I will go uh, much deeper with my students there and you not only just learn 10 herbs. You learn nearly 40 herbs, I believe about 40 herbs in my course and um, you will learn the recipe, a bit more complex recipe and how to modify them for your own needs. So I hope to see you in my course if you're interested but otherwise these 10 herbs will get you started. So thanks again for watching and I hope you find this video interesting and I hope you learn a lot in this video. If you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so to let the algorithm know and let me know that you enjoy videos such as this and please share with your families and friends if you know they're interested in Chinese medicine who use Chinese herbs a lot at home for cooking and for diet so they know it properly it's not just throwing things without understanding what they are for and whether they actually can use it safely so thank you again I'll see you in the next video bye